The Ford Escape is Ford's take on the crossover SUV, and today I'm going to be talking about five cool things about the Ford Escape. This is going over all trim levels, whether it be hybrid or not. And before we hop into the video, I just want to remind you all to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel to help us reach that 1,000 subscriber goal. Every one of you helps us get closer to our goal of 1,000 subscribers, and we really appreciate all of you. That being said, let's get into the video. Starting with fuel economy, the 2.5 liter hybrid with the CVT in a front wheel drive configuration has an EPA estimated range of 582 miles to a single tank. The gas tank size is 14.2 gallons and the EPA estimates a combined gas mileage of 41.2 miles per gallon. This makes the Ford Escape one of the most fuel efficient vehicles on the market today. The next thing I wanna talk about is the two liter optional EcoBoost engine. The Escape comes with other engine options other than the hybrid and 1.5 liter. One of of which is the 2-liter EcoBoost inline-4 engine that makes 250 horsepower. The fact that this crossover only makes 60 horsepower less than my Mustang is kind of depressing, but if you're looking for a zippy crossover SUV, then the Escape should be a candidate as it delivers more power than a lot of its competitors. So the Bronco tows 3,500 pounds, but who cares, it's an off-road vehicle. Well, the Escape is a crossover, so why would you ever worry about towing? All you're doing is taking kids to school and running to the grocery store with this thing, right? Well, not so fast. If you're looking for a smaller vehicle that can put up some numbers, the Ford Escape might be able to meet your needs as it can tow 3,500 pounds in its titanium configuration with the 2-liter EcoBoost engine. I owned one of these things, and I never knew it could do that. I mentioned running kids to school earlier, so how much legroom will your kids be getting? Great question! The Ford Escape has 40.7 inches of legroom in the rear seats. On top of that, they are some of the most comfortable back seats I've ever sat in in a crossover SUV. I compared the Tucson and the Escape a couple months ago, and that was one of the biggest wins for the Escape, the comfort, at least in my opinion. I usually don't sit in the back seat, so for me it's not a huge deal, but if you care about that sort of thing, then take that into account. And the last thing I want to talk about is technology. Before the refresh in 2020, the Escape was kind of lacking in some areas, but now when you get an Escape, you feel like you're getting in a baby Ford Explorer. What I mean by that is the Escape SEL Hybrid has a bunch of tech that the Ford Explorer has, including the digital gauge cluster that changes based on your drive modes. You also get adaptive cruise control, stop and go, and lane centering. In layman's terms, the SUV can drive itself on the highway. These features are available as standard on the titanium model of the Escape Hybrid, but if you get an SEL Hybrid, make sure you get the technology package. If you get the non-hybrid model of the Escape, you can also do this instead of going all the way up to the titanium trim level, but come on, who doesn't want to see the words titanium on the lift gate of their Ford Escape? Alright, so not so bad, right? Honestly, I think the Ford Escapes are great crossovers, and they sort of have a Porsche Macan look to them, which is kind of interesting. Please don't hate me, Porsche fans, I'm just making a small comparison. Anyways, if you have any thoughts on the video, leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, make sure you smash that like button, and if you want to see more from us, go ahead and subscribe. We are so close to 1,000 now, and we'd love if you help us reach our goal. That being said, I'll see you all in the next video.